and welcome to Rock, Paper, Hand Grenades. I am Representative Gary Hopper, the great. And next to me is the Honorable Sir Eric of Eastman. That's a lot of syllables to slap yeah, on. I know, up, I know. As a prefix on your name. Prefix, I prefix, prefix. prefix. It's an extra I fix. Prefer my prefixes. Yes. I guess so, I'm going to have to live up to all that stuff. So, uh, anyway. So we got a cool show coming up. we got a down. cool show. we got yeah, a cool show. Yes, we do. So, tonight we're, we've Good got the, the, the folks from Hope for a Recovery. We got Kelly Riley, who, what, what, I don't even know what your title is. What is your title? I got a couple of them. Let's see. Uh, I would be a. Because you've been there forever. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I remember hanging yeah. out with you guys down on um, um, Market Street. Canal, Street. Fr- Canal. Canal and Market was our first right. one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you moved, uh, you got to Better Digs over. Yeah. On what street is that? That was on the corner of Pine and Central. 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 Central street, right in the heart of. And then you guys moved up to the, the big house mm-hmm. over at the Hoyt Furniture Building. Yeah. Which is where you're currently. Mm-hmm. So you've been there forever, the ground floor yep. of this thriving business. Mm-hmm. I know. I know. It was a Never joke. Never a dull it was, moment. It was a joke. Like she's gonna get rich doing this. <laughs> <laughs> well, the papers do say that she makes over two hundred fifty thousand yeah, dollars. Right, oh yeah. yeah, I bet. Yeah, typo there. I, I do wish. But. Yeah. And Adam, you're. I. I don't think we met before. Adam, no. I've forgotten your last name already. Scalinji. My name is Adam Scalinji. I'm the center manager down at Hope for Hampshire. The Trevor. center manager. I am. Mm-hmm. It sounds like like a football position. Mm-hmm. We should pay like one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it should get paid like one. You should get kind paid. I know. I know that. He does it all. He does it all. Mm. You do it everything. You do everything. Some <laughs> days it seems that way. <laughs> yeah. It does. It does. I do everything, and it's a wonderful thing, though. It is. It's a wonderful life. Hey, before we get started, uh, the the topic of today's show, if we have a topic, how much time we get? We don't get much time today. Um, Imagine that. So, anyway, who's going to read? I can read. I'd be more than happy. Scal- if Scalingi will read. Mr. Scalingi. So, um, for people who don't know, this is the time of year who, uh, people who are drug addicts and alcoholics, this is a really rough time of year because you kind of want to hang out with your friends, but if you hang out with your friends, you're going to use. Mm-hmm. Um, so, p- alcoholics have a whole bunch of places you can go. They're called Alcathons. And um, S- Sir Adam is going to read you off some of them. This is all <coughs> on the Rock Paper Hand Grenades Facebook page. Uh, this list is on there, if you don't, you, so you don't have to write it down. But we can, if you read them off for me, young man. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, should I explain what an alcathon is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what an alcathon is is a tw- it's a um, a twenty four hour event that will be going from Christmas Eve at six p.m to Christmas Day at 6 p.m. and it's 24 hours of Alcoholics and Honest meetings and food. also food. and a lot, food. Of food. a lot of food. I was food. getting to the nosh. Yeah, a there's lot a lot of food, man. Coffee. There's a, there's a lot of food, coffee, like a potluck, everyone kind of brings something and there's more food that you could imagine and more importantly though there is fellowship there. There are people there who are in the program who all are going to support each other and get a, you know, Get our, get each other through tough times. And not only are there alcathons, there's also narcathons. Alco- alcathons are put on by Alcoholics Anonymous. Narcathons are put on by Narcotics Anonymous. Right. So just to let you know, the Christmas alcathons that will be going on here in the state of New Hampshire um, are all right. The Concord Lutheran Church at two eleven North Main Street. Concordian. Concordian, you're right. Concordian. I know. I had to, I had to type it today. So. Yeah, yeah. I could see where that'd be rough. Um, and that is <laughs> December twenty fifth, seven a.m. to ten p.m. Um, and December twenty fourth, six p.m. To December 25th at 6 p.m., the Dairy Friendship Center at 6 Railroad Avenue Dairy will also be having an alcathon. Yeah. Um, December 24th, 6 to 6, once again, St. Raphael's Ch- Hall here in Manchester at number 44th Street. That one. Yeah, if you want to get some eating done, yeah. that's the place to strap on the feedback. Not Absolutely. that that's all I think about, but that's all I think about. Agreed, agreed. Okay. Um, December 24th from noon. To December 25th at 9 p.m., Hudson Community Center at 12 Lions Avenue, Hudson will also be having an alcathon. Uh, December 24th, 6 to 11 p.m., and December 25th, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., the Keene Serenity Center at 36 Carpenter Street in Keene will also be having an alcathon. And let's go with New Year's Eve, because as we all know, New Year's Eve is a big one. Is a big Amateur one. Amateur night, man. It Amateur is. Night. It is. So um, for all of us, 
I'm going to say for myself as an alcoholic, it's good to be at something like that mm-hmm. on New Year's Eve because I can only yeah, speak for myself. Um, so New Year's Eve, December 31st at 6 p.m. to midnight, St. Jude's Hall behind St. Joseph Church at 40 Main Street in Salem will be having an alcathon. And then December 31st at 6.30 to midnight, St. Raphael's once again. Here in Manchester, we'll be having another Narcathon themselves. Um, to let everyone know, also, Narcotics Anonymous will be putting on a Narcathon at Hopeford Hampshire Recovery at 293 Wilson Street, where Kelly and I both, we'll just say reside, because reside, we never leave. Yeah. We yeah. never leave. So, yeah, I, that's that's pretty much, I sleep in a cot in the back, I think, now. Um, and that will be at 293 Wilson Street here in Manchester. Once again, Narcathon 12. 12 Christmas Day to, say, 8, 9 o'clock Christmas Night. evening. Yep. And that's Narcotics Anonymous's Narcathon, and uh, once again a serious Chow Fest on top of that. And uh, come eat. You guys like have some, some pretty good food over there. I heard. I heard a vicious rumor. <laughs> I don't know. I, it. Yeah. It's 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 nothing to mess around with. More than that, it's the fellowship of people that are all hanging out together. Lots of gut wrenching laughing. It is. Gut it wrenching. Is. Does it gut have to be gut wrenching? Like, ah, yeah. Well, hopefully you eat after you know your gut wrenching. Or Shouldn't you eat before? Uh, no, before you start wrenching your gut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's safe to say that the holiday season is tough on anyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is stressful. It mm-hmm. is. Yeah. And if you if you're if you're somebody who's you know down and out because you because of, I mean the thing is when somebody has uh, been drinking or drugging for a long time, they're pretty much pushed away. Everybody mm-hmm. that they grew up with or friends, family. You're not getting invited to a lot of yeah, family yeah. events. Agreed. Right. Yeah. Agreed. When people think your name, they don't say, oh, man, I hope they show up right. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> if, they if they're allowed to. If they're allowed to. Don't. Right. If they're they're allowed to. to. Yeah, if even if it's a, a possibility. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. exactly. So it's, it's it can be super lonely and tough that time of year, so it's good to have the Alcathons. Um, and there's a lot of AA meetings, too. You can go and, and NA meetings. Agreed. All Agreed. over the place. You can go to either NHAA.org or NHNA.org and get all of the meetings you need to. There's actually uh, a uh, app you can get for your phone. I have it. It is an awesome app. Yeah. What's, what's it called? Finder. It's a meeting finder app. I think yeah, that meeting finder. You can get for your phone, and it'll tell you where there's a meeting within, you know, 5 yeah. miles, 20 it has miles. Yeah, it has a little ch- fold- folding chair on it. It's a blue app. It's cool. Yeah, yeah so you can definitely find... Uh, any meetings in your area at any point in time, absolutely. And, you know, with that comes, you know, you get a daily reflection and also to a uh, sobriety counter, too, so it'll tell you how many days you're on. And also, I hope we have the Refuge Recovery, which is pretty cool. What's that? Refuge Recovery is like a Buddhist twist on the 12 steps. So yeah. you get a lot of dreadlocks and people meditating. And yeah, it's meditation it's really is a huge part of it. Like, no, to, there's a book written by a man by the name of Noah Wild who wrote, um, he's very instrumental in the three principles also. Okay. Um, and he also wrote a book by the name of Refuge Recovery and started a movement with Refuge Recovery. Mm. And just to kind of piggyback off that, we hold, we have 65 meetings and or groups a week at Hope from Hampshire Recovery. Because mm-hmm. you guys got all kinds mm-hmm. of different, you got AA meetings. Mm-hmm. We've got every path and form of recovery you can really imagine. Gamble is anonymous, which is huge. Like there's hardly any um, meetings in this state. I think there was like two we have one there now at the yeah, center. And we're working on a second can, thing. You can bet on that. You can. Yes. yes. Right. Yes. Um, and also, to, yeah. <laughs> so within the 65 meetings and groups we have a week, we have everything from all recovery, refuge recovery, smart recovery, which is a curriculum-based form of recovery mm-hmm. that comes with a workbook and everything. Um, so, so in other words, if you if you're if you're having problems or your loved ones having problems. Al Anon. That's the place to go because yes. a lot of people say, well, I won't go to AA because they talk about God. Well, you've guys got so many programs, mm-hmm. that's not an excuse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we take we take whatever it is you dislike about recovery out of one way, shape, or form a meeting that we have. Right. Whatever it may be that you that works for you, we're going to have it. Whether that's yoga, whether that's meditation, whether that's mm. art therapy, mm-hmm. whether that's music therapy. We have a Hope Ensemble that's there one night a week, and wow. they have traveling gigs all over the state throughout the year. We have, um, like I said, an art program. High emphasis on art. We do a lot of art there. Yeah. We have a whole art room, and we just received a good chunk of money to buy more art supplies with. So wow. Dave Cody, shout out to Dave Cody. Yeah. 
yeah. he has really taken this thing and ran with it. He was our IT guy for a while, but we were able to free him up by hiring someone who's actually a bit better at that and more suited for the job because he was very resentful at doing that job <laughs> anyway. And he is an incredible artist and photographer himself. Mm -hmm. He owns his own photography Dave studio. Cody. I know I've met him. Yeah, and yeah mm -hmm. you have. If you've been around mm -hmm. us, you've met Dave Cody, and he okay. is a spectacular guy. I share an office with him, so I have to pump him up here. Right, I don't exactly. Want to hear it in the office. Or else you'll move your pencils. Yeah. <laughs> right. And that would, and Kelly knows how bad my OCD is. Oh, and so geez. you move my pencils. That's, that's it. You're done for the day. Yeah, the, the whole ball <laughs> of wax know. is going to melt. <laughs> yeah, it's all coming crumbling down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll die a thousand deaths. So another, another thing, too, uh, uh, for people who are trying to stay sober and st straight this uh, holiday season. Holiday season. Sure. Um, it, it, don't go to the party. Mm -hmm. If you if you're going to a party with this alcohol and drugs and you know it's going to be there and you know you're going to be tempted, don't go. If go you had to, to go meeting. to the recovery buddy, you could do that. We like to say substance free. You know, I want to remain substance free because yeah. there's not one substance that I like more than the other. Sometimes, but usually not. Right. Yeah. I think and Kelly can attest to this. She and I are addicted to more. Yeah. You know, right. whatever it is, I just want more of it. I want it ten minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Anything yeah. to take and take the take the uh, pain away, or anything. Mm -hmm. to Agreed. Well, get the loneliness, myself. right? Get the loneliness, myself. The, yeah. the, the anxiety, or whatever it is. Because uh, um, I hear this I, at the state house. We hear a lot. Well, it's all self. You know, they think that alcohol and drug addiction is just a function of self control, and it really isn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, these these people, most people, or a lot. I shouldn't say most. A lot of people who become addicted were traumatized as kids mm -hmm. and they're they've got this massive quantity of anxiety and the first time they do drugs all that anxiety goes away With one let's not forget day. this state is so high in overdose deaths that a lot of people are having their first holiday without that loved one it's the first one they're going through with the loss of somebody in their family that oh has yeah. overdosed and died so yeah. they're really sad as it is but you don't know how to be around other people with your great grief and sadness so it's good to surround yourself with other people that have been through that. Yeah, sure, sure. So, so in other words, it, so if you if you uh, if you're having trouble this holiday season, go to a meeting instead. Come to oh, Hope. Come, come to us. Hope. Right, we'll come to go us. hang out with Hope, Hope mm -hmm. Recovery people. They're yeah. wonderful people. Go hang out with somebody. Get out of yourself. Mm -hmm. Get away. If uh, if you go to a party, where a family party or something, and you you know you're going to get a little bit antsy. Park at the end of the driveway so that if, if you're getting if if it the gets too much you can bail out. Mm -hmm. Also, if you're an alcoholic, make sure you bring your own drinks to the party. Mm -hmm. If it's your soda, you know what's in it. Yeah. You know, don't you know, don't take any chances. This is a a lot of suicides this time of year because people can't handle it. So. Agreed. Agreed. Um, Hang out with people who care. Yeah, surround yourself with a good foundation. I would imagine it would also be the case that a person doesn't necessarily have to have um, uh, substance use or substance reliance doesn't necessarily have to be the trigger for what's troubling them during the holidays mm -hmm. in order for them to join you mm -hmm. and feel like they're around people who Absolutely. care and are, and are helping carry the weight. Mm -hmm. Whatever That's what the it's weight all about is. Mm -hmm. and wherever it's from. Mm -hmm. Sure. I know where the maybe weight family is. issues. Family members, right? I mean, Absolutely. You know, everybody's got uh, everybody's got a battle they're fighting, right? Mm -hmm. You know, some it's of it's safer more to be invisible with us, than others. Right. And agreed, agreed. Be with Just your fellowship. weight might be different than the the weight that you're bearing might be different than the weight I'm bearing fundamentally, but it doesn't mean yeah. that it's any less of a weight on you and or I. There's yeah, no it's still a human struggle. So agreed. I would imagine the doors are open mm -hmm. for anyone that's yeah. feeling that way. Holidays are mm -hmm. tough. Agreed. That's great agreed. to know. That's yeah. Great to know. And, and like I said, we offer an extremely wide range of just good things, whether it be a meeting, whether it be a group, whether it be art, whether it be some just coming down and playing some ping pong and having a cup of coffee. You we know? really highlight authentic peer-to-peer -peer recovery support services. So peer-to-peer -peer means my, you have a little lived experience, and I'm talking to you and you're talking, so we're not in the clinical realm. There we go. Right. Yeah. That's but also to let you know, on wonderful. on that the other side of that, we do offer medically assisted treatment. Oasis Recovery Centers does rent space from us one day a week, Tuesdays from two to two, I believe. Yeah, I think it's two o'clock. Mm -hmm. So if that is a possible option for you, that medically assisted treatment might be something you're onto. You can definitely go to Oasis website at recoverynh.com. Mm -hmm. And we actually are calling it, starting to call it medically assisted recovery rather than treatment. Agreed. Because recovery mm -hmm. is what 
you're doing in your life now. That's the goal. That is. That's the end goal. Actually, that's a journey. Mm -hmm. the journey. The journey, right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, you were say, saying something. This is uh, talk, talking about more generic. You said that um, before the show, because I've always been suspicious of some, um, I, I visited somebody I was, I was uh, trying to help out at a, at a recovery place. Mm -hmm. And they were going through a 28-day program. And I was convinced after uh, being there that, and it's not to denigrate what they were doing, mm -hmm. but it was clear to me that if you took a, a, a person who was trying to get sober and, and maybe they just got, you know, um, Narcan back to life and they're in the 28-day program, if you taught that kid or person karate for 28 days, mm -hmm. okay, and they get up every morning and did karate, karate for 28 days, mm -hmm. they would leave that facility feeling stronger, healthier, like they could conquer the world, mm -hmm. and within a very short period of time, they would be back with their friends mm -hmm. using, mm -hmm. and whether or not they survived this time is, is up for grabs. And you were, you were telling me something before the show that um, there are cases where these facilities actually know how many times they can put you through, so there isn't really much aftercare because their, their intent isn't necessarily to cure anything. Well, first of all, the disclaimer in this I'd like to say is, of course, not all facilities are like this. Right. But yeah. unfor the, un the unfortunate fact in all of this there are crooked facilities out there. there. There are multiple facets to this whole whole thing, and you have to realize at the end of the day, of course, it comes down to the dollar. But on top of that, insurance companies rule the world. When I have someone come in in crisis to the center, unfortunately, I mean, this, this mm. person's at the, at the bottom of the bottom. They are desperate. They are seeking help. That's why they're in there. They realize there's a problem. They're at a lowest point. They're at a point low enough into their life that they're willing to just build up a lot of courage and that takes a lot of courage and I must commend them on that to come into the center and ask for help mm -hmm. and when they come into the center and ask for help unfortunately one of the first questions and I tell them as I said I'm sorry but unfortunately the first question I have to ask you is what do you have for insurance right. right because I'm going to tailor the help I can get for you based on what you have for insurance right but if they tell you they have state or federal insurance there, for well that once again the even that we go oh gosh what does that leave <laughs> well what it is is it, by by once, once again, even that has become convoluted because the problem being is there are different tiers of Medicaid now. Then there's Medicare, so yeah. on and so forth, and different treatment centers. Once they tell me what they have, okay, let's say they say, let's say they have uh, Medicaid. Based on the tier that they have between different tiers of Medicaid, I can tailor the options of what they have based on what tier they, of insurance they have. There are always options, just to let anybody know who's listening, there are always options that we can give you based on what you have in your insurance, or if you have no insurance, there are still options. I don't want anyone to ever think that just because they don't have insurance or they don't have great insurance that, that, that it's hopeless. Because no matter what, you come in, I'm going to get you in somewhere, mm -hmm. and I'm not yeah, going to stop I was until talking, I, I do. Yeah, that I get, and I, I know you guys do that, but what I was getting at is you were telling me that some places – Look at a, look at a client and say, "Wow, we can put them here through oh, here." Bilking two insurance more companies. What is it called? Bilking an insurance company. Right. You know, and and it's it's very very crooked. I've heard I've heard horror stories, and and Kelly and I both have a very good friend who is at a, according to the website, a very fancy treatment center on the beach in Florida. Yeah. Um, years ago, he went through their 28-day program, then went into their sober housing, and then went on to be the manager of the sober housing there, and also was the cook at this treatment center and worked for the treatment center. But at the same time, the doctor that ran the treatment center was paying him $1,000 cash in an envelope, literally under the table once a week, to stay there sick as a patient so they could just keep charging his insurance company for him to stay there. Wow. Uh, see. Class yeah, act. class act mm -hmm. down there. But once again, I don't want that to ever turn anyone off as to treatment. There are a lot of very good treatment centers out there. But then again, you have to be very careful for fly-by-night places mm -hmm. such as that. Yeah, well, there's a they lot. They do of, exist. Yeah, and they also, because to me, I'll tell you, as a legislator, what, what is really difficult for me <clears throat> is if I know, like, the difficult part is there's no statistics. Mm -hmm. In other words, mm -hmm. I put... Um, use taxpayer dollars to put uh, Joe through this 28-day program. 
Yeah. Or I put them through this program or this program. Say five different programs. I have no idea. I don't know how much should it cost to go through a 28 day program. 20,000? More than that, even. Okay. So but yeah, let's just say 20,000. Just say 20,000 for argument's sake. So Easily. the state, the yeah, state line, shells please. out $20,000. Mm -hmm. Or let's say a big insurance company does. Okay. That matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So they spend out $20,000, right? They, they they come out of their pocket, and you have programs A, B, C, D, and E, and there is no statistics to mm. tell me that if they do A, there's a 60% chance no. of them being sober in a year. If they do B, there's only a 5% chance, exactly. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's et cetera. no measurable line of success mm -hmm. in any way, shape, or form with, with what you're getting into, going into a treatment center. That is why... Through lived experience and talking with others is is really the only way. I'm talking from a patient's point of view, from someone in in need of help, right. doing your research, but not just doing your research by using the World Wide Web, because using the internet to do your research that can be very, very one-sided. Oh no, I went to my I was with my brothers who were in Cal were heading from California to uh, Vegas. Sure. We're driving through. I don't know what town it is. We so. No, I don't know what it was. Right. It's still in California. We're looking for a restaurant, some place to stop just for a half an hour and have something to eat. Sure. We saw this, like, I think it was Mary or Maria's or something like that place. It's five star. Mm -hmm. We had to clean our own tables. They were so <laughs> gross. Yeah. The bathrooms were freaking exactly. trash. It was so gross. All of us wondered how far we were going to get down the road before we were all sick. Right. Yeah. It, it turned out to be okay. We didn't die. That's but it was like super sketchy. Yeah. Uh, the neighborhood was super sketchy. Mm -hmm. It was super gross. But it had five stars. Why? Because mm -hmm. enough of their friends got on there. Beep, exactly. beep, beep, beep. Exactly. So, yeah. The <laughs> it's, it's, it's speaking to people in this career field like Kelly and I are. And it's especially on our level because, like I said, we're a nonprofit organization. We don't get anything for mm -hmm. for what, what our opinions are. And also, too, we have the, we've, had, we've put our eyes on it. We've seen what this place does for this person, what this place does for this person. We know everything that's going on behind the scenes there. We personally know mm -hmm. a lot of people that work at these places, yeah. either good friends of ours or the opposite, whatever it may be. We know the inside scoop on all these places, and I'm not saying we are the only ones to come to when you are in need. Believe me, you can do your own research, but I think it helps to reach out to someone who has a non-biased outlook mm. on all right. of these places. Yeah, it's, it's tough. Good advice. It is good advice. It's hard, too, because rec how do you measure recovery? People that are truly in recovery get better, and you don't hear any more of their sure. criminal activity. Yeah, you there's don't no hear. Venn diagrams mm -hmm. that will right. explain any of this. So is there... Anyone in the, I hate to call it an industry, but you know, in, in this is, field. Though, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it is. Well, if, if insurance companies are involved, it absolutely is. be realistic. Is, sure. absolutely is. There's, there's a profit motive. But is there anyone, to your knowledge, collecting metrics and data on the recidivism rates mm -hmm. based on this? Sure, there is a collection. This modality for recovery versus this one and all that kind of I thing? don't know if it's that if it's broken down that much, you know, right. to, to institution to institution to institution to business to company to company, I don't think it's broken down that much. There is, but honestly, it's not reliable. Okay. Because how can you measure something Plus like that? Plus, you're comparing apples to oranges. And Agreed. Kind of thing, and so. also, too, your idea of recovery and success might be different than my idea mm -hmm. of recovery sure. and I went, success. I went so it's very personal. I went to a so it's hard to do that. It's hard to collect. It's extremely hard. Yeah. I went to a impossible. seminar. I don't, you remember Dave Fine? Yeah, very well. I love Dave Fine. I just Fine. found his business card the other day. It was so funny. I keep calling him. He yeah. never eats. Yeah. But anyway, I love him. So I, I uh, went down to uh, the Cape for a seminar. And I went around as a legislator asking the same question I just asked you. How do you know? How do you oh, we, success? we have 70% success rate. According based to on, who? Based on what? Define that. Well, yeah. we, we call them two months afterwards. Right. So you expect an alcohol and drug addict to tell you the truth? <laughs> really? <Agreed. laughs> But we do do that, that too. Over the phone. Over the phone. We do telephone recovery support, which actually is very helpful because we have people sign up as members, and then we say, you interested in telephone recovery support? So we have we are calling them and checking on them. And Every many week. success stories about that is fi people finally come in. You know what I mean? They come in. And well, yeah, like, but that's, that's, well, yeah. that's also there's nothing biased on this. Right. Yeah, this but is that, just you're us not doing trying, it for You're the, not the trying good. to do it to, to you know, to make jump your, data your, look make good, your right. names look good. You're mm -hmm. doing it because you... 
care, care about people right. and you want them, mm. you want to follow. Yeah. There's a big difference. Agreed. Agreed. And, and you're right. They all said the same thing. It was all all. Here's BS. the thing. At the end of the it day, no you, numbers. You if let's let's say let's say Kelly and I owned a treatment center that we were of course profiting from. We could just make that number up. We right. don't even need right. to say we were right. calling it. We could literally it. just make it up. Right. Who's gonna Who's gonna prove us wrong? Right. Mm -hmm. Because there's no way of measuring this data. I mean, just like when someone says voted best pizza. Yeah, maybe it was 20 years ago. They don't ever have to take the sign down and say that we aren't <laughs> yeah. voted that anymore. At exactly. one time they were. I have a voting pool of five people. Right. But exactly. at least they yeah. their And even in that, there is some concrete evidence that they were voted best pizza because <laughs> it actually happened by a group of people who were had nothing to do with it. But, yeah, there's no way to measure it. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's nothing to compare to. Like you said, apples and oranges. So you said that maybe the Internet is not always the best, at, at least not the the best exclusive source for information sure, if you're going to do your research mm -hmm. to find out what's the best fit for you. What would a person coming at it from a dead stop who's interested in, in Who's in crisis. Let's, who's let's in let's crisis. Say that. What, what's their baby steps in order to find out the best information the fastest? Reach out to somebody who is going to, who works in this field, who does, has no reason to tell you anything that is is non-biased of course sure reach out to someone in this field who who works for a non-profit organization who's non-biased and also too has some good insight too because i'm there's not to say that everybody who works in this field whether it's a non-profit or not knows what they're doing mm -hmm. right do you That's have do you have a a sense a sense of if people go through we're going to go back to programs a b and c agreed they go through a mm -hmm. they go through b the people that go from C in this area, if they go through C, sure. if they live in this area, there's <clears> about 60% more likely to come to your facility and make sure they're getting a follow-up and going to meetings well, or whatever. That's where I was going to go with this. The thing with a follow-up is huge. Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's the, the, <laughs> some lineage in this. I, the way I look at it, the thing is, a 28-day program is exactly what it says it is. It's 28 days. And then there's the rest of your life after that. Mm -hmm. So the continuum of care, no matter what it may be, is where we come into play. Because you are going to walk out of that 28-day program. Maybe you feel like a new man. Maybe you feel like a new man or woman, and you feel in indestructible, and you can take on the world. You're going to change the world. Okay. All right. Great attitude. Mm -hmm. How long is that attitude going to last when you're putting an old playground with old people, with with everything else? You're going back to your home, with whatever it may be. That's where we come into effect. Like I said, we're, we're an RCO, recovery community organization. What we are is we're just a, a place to be surrounded by meetings in recovery and people, most importantly, who are all in recovery themselves, whether it's staff members or just members themselves, who go to meetings and want to help the newcomer out. Mm -hmm. Because, like I said, 28 days is, is exactly what it is. It's 28 days. Now you have the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think a lot of this is lacking in the general sense of, of, of recovery. Where it is lacking is that rest of your life the follow component. Okay. Yeah. And a lot of people don't think of that, whether it be politicians, whether it be insurance companies, mm -hmm. whether it be big biz, whatever it may be, that you don't forget it. They don't think about that because it's so... It's it's such an old thing that you know detox and a twenty eight day program mm -hmm. has been going on for so long. The blinders are on, and you and politicians only see in in in. You still in have the to clean up the wreckage of your past. Yeah, okay? you're getting out. You're not going to fix something right. you took ten years for you to screw up. Right, if your right. life, if you took ten years of your life to really mess it up, mm -hmm. twenty eight days isn't going to be the end all mm -hmm. be all for that. I'm better. Mm -hmm. I'm cured, and let me go on with my life mm -hmm. before I picked up my first drink or drug. Right. You know, I think we can all agree on that, that it's, it's the, <clears throat> the rest of your life. I know for myself, and once again, I can only speak for myself, that I know that the rest of my life is going to be committed to my own recovery. Mm -hmm. Yep, you know? one day at a time. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, it is, it is pretty tough. It's a tough thing, especially if you get out in 28 days. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. You're I was bewildered you, walking yeah. out of that for 28 I, days. I don't understand. Um, I was talking to my son who works at uh, Phoenix House. No, is a Phoenix house in Dublin. Right? It is. Yeah, yeah. I'm he, on the phone with him every day. Mm -hmm. And he's he's uh, he's such a good kid. <laughs> I love that guy. Anyway, I I was on talking to him, and he said one of the problems is when they people get out, they put them in like a halfway house, or the courts will tell them they have to stay within the district. Mandated, sure. Mandated. Well, the one thing you don't want to do is put them in the same town mm -hmm. where they were using. Mm -hmm. 
You, you, like, have, you don't really have a choice in that, though. It's I know. Not like I you get, can't I get, go back to your own town. Yeah. Agreed. Here's the other no, side no, of that. If you were a halfway house, mm-hmm. if like a kid, a kid was used in a Manchester, sure. Mm-hmm. The best thing to do to me is put him in a halfway house in Keene where he doesn't know anybody. Yep. Sure, in a perfect world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or Absolutely, Plymouth. Absolutely, but let's... Uh, He'll you know, find those people, though, because, yeah. you know, we see... Oh, we will. I think we can all agree that, yeah, in a perfect world, right. absolutely. Mm-hmm. But is that realistic? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. It, it, there are... Absolutely, we, we can manage that. We can work it out. Absolutely. But a lot of times, that's not an option. And we do things like, let's get you to work, okay? We want you to get to work. We're yeah, going to so sit with societal people. Societal reintegration mm-hmm. is a huge part of mm-hmm. what Kelly and I do. Mm-hmm. Right, right. You know, and that's also, too, not only is this with Hope for New Hampshire Recovery, it's also with the sober houses that mm-hmm. Kelly and I mm-hmm. both run. Mm-hmm. That it's This isn't just about the time you spend it at, at Hope and, and get involved with meetings and so on and so forth. That's That's a great part of it, absolutely, but I think... We all need structure in our lives as human beings. We all need to contribute to society. Mm-hmm. Once again, from a society we've taken so much mm-hmm. from for so long, that self-esteem at the bare minimum is going to be built up by reintegrating yourself into yeah, society. Yeah, you build up self-esteem not by convincing yourself how great you are. You build up self-esteem by doing good mm-hmm. things. Yeah, agreed. agreed. Integrity. Doing I'm the same thing even when anyone, someone's not looking. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I don't do that. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. okay. Once again, <laughs> progress, not perfection, right? <laughs> right. One <laughs> day at a time, and you might. Sure, I represent it. I'll you back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nice to know. Sure. Out yourself every week. We still don't play. I know, I know. I know. We only get a couple minutes, so tell me what, what's your favorite Chuck Norris joke? My favorite? Oh, yeah, My yeah. favorite. And once again, so these aren't many. jokes. These are facts. These, oh, these, these are facts. facts. Sorry. Get it straight, they're facts. I am sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. Agreed, agreed. Um... Do you know that Chuck Norris sleeps, sleeps with a nightlight? No. Is the dark scared of him? <laughs> <laughs> it's very thoughtful. It is. It is. It's it's deep. Do you know that That's the boogeyman chucks under his bed for Chuck Norris every night? Hey, how does Steven Seagal feel about all Steven this? Steven Seagal's facts. Facts. squinting. That's, that's oh, is, is that Steven it? Seagal's and running, squints. squints. <laughs> yes, he squints, and, and you sit around and you, you can't tell what race he is. He's, uh, yeah. <laughs> he can be anything. He can be a, he can be a Native American. He can be an Italian guy. He can be this. He I think he's that. played all those things. Mm-hmm. He, that's what I'm. That exact, that's where I'm going with this. Yeah, right, yeah. Right, right. Do you see that he is now Putin's ambassador to Russia? Oh yeah, New York Times article. He, he Spectacular. He yeah. actually immigrated. I think he's. You know exactly what that is? That's that Vladimir Putin spitting in our faces. He, <laughs> he actually did defect to. Yeah. Russia. Yes. He did. Go, he Steve. Did. Go, Go Steve. Go Steve. He was a wow. cop in Louisiana, right to Russia. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, so if you uh, I'll buy you a gateway drug, if mm-hmm. if you need help this this uh, season, um, get help. Go to Hope for Recovery. They can steer you in the right direction. You got to yep. get the phone number off the top of your head. Sure. It's 603-935-7524. Once again, we're at 293 Wilson Street, right here in Manchester, New Hampshire, in the old C.A. Hoyt Furniture Building on the first floor. And you have a website and everything. We do. Mm-hmm. We do. We are at hopeforrecoverynh.org. Mm-hmm. And, um, follow us we'll, on Facebook. Follow us on Facebook. Absolutely. We'd love to have you. We have a lot of great things going on, a lot of great programs, a lot of community events. Like I said, 65 groups and or group and or meetings a week going on. We open 9 to 9 during the week and 12 to 7 on the weekends. And if you want a list of those alcathons, again, there's they're on uh, um, uh, Rock, Paper, Hand Grenades uh, Facebook um, page right below the show. Mm-hmm. One of the comments is the, uh, the list. Um, you can call um, wh- NA, what's what's a state a website? Uh, NHAA.org. NHAA.org. You or, can go there and find a meeting. NHAA.org for Narcotics Anonymous. Yeah. 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 Uh, to, to, so there's tons of help out there. Yeah, and our Get website it. has oh, a whole list. Oh, the other list, the other person, if if you're a mom and your kid's kids yeah. going off the deep end, can they call you? Absolutely. Absolutely. I deal with that more than anything. Honestly. Or a dad. Or a dad. Children meeting. I yeah. sit down with parents personally, and, and we go yeah. over this because a lot of them are very naive as to what's going they're on. They're naive, and, so, they're, and so they're scared. They they're right. s- of course they are. You know, they think they're you know they're going to get if a phone call. If they're calling me, they're at a point where they don't know where to turn, and I'm more than happy to sit down with them that for as long awesome. as need be. That is awesome. I am so glad. I've been involved with you guys for like five years yeah. since you started, and it is it, you are a blessing to the state and the city. And thank you, thank guys you for, for the all noble you do. work you do. Yeah. Thank you on behalf. I know of you the do it for the money, but hey, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Get that yeah, insurance. right. Apparently, the insurance company. I got dinners on me. All right. Hey, hey! Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.